Greetings and welcome to Paths to Freedom on this blessed Poi Day. On Paths to Freedom, what we focus on is Buddhism in a very modern context. Looking at the current society, we understand that we are busy individuals. Sometimes we don't have time to practice Buddhism uh, just by isolating ourselves in one singular place it's because we have to uh, compete and compare ourselves at the same time, which is not taught in Buddhism, but something that we end up doing all the time. And today's discussion being about Buddhism in daily life, we have invited uh, Venerable Bhikkhu Pratnipal of Bangladesh, who is also a visiting lecturer of the Department of Pali and Buddhist Studies of the University of Kalania. Bhikkhu, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhasse. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhasse. Namo tasse bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhasse. So, I mean, say, now when it comes to uh, an introduction to our program, we look at Buddhism in a very uh, complex way because sometimes we tend to uh, not understand fully what these entities are mm. because the definitions are everywhere but we don't understand the exact same definition that is given in Buddhism. So as an introduction when it comes to Buddha and Buddhism and also being a Buddhist in Buddhist culture as well as Buddhist uh, history what is the exact same definition exact definition that we should understand in a modern or more like a current context? Well once again thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, this is a very, very good question indeed because first of all we have to understand uh, the keywords that is called the Buddha, Buddhism, Buddhist culture and Buddhist traditions. Mm -hmm. Because of you know sometimes we see even the scholar do not have a clear understanding about these terms somewhere it seems they have misled it especially scholars coming from the non-Buddhist countries. Mm. So they might have listened or read something about the Buddhism, even, even the books they have written mm -hmm. or read or the master they have listened to also should be questionable. Mm. It be questioned whether how far or how far they have understood what the Buddha meant by the term Buddha or Buddhism or Buddha's teachings, this and that. So now here the first term is the Buddha. Of, of course, we know Buddha is the spiritual teachers who lived mm. in India more than 2,500 years ago. There's no question, everybody we know that, and he is the historical person, mm. he's already proved. And Buddha, then Buddhism. Mm. So now you see the Buddhism. Buddhism is a term or English word translated for the terms in Pali, Buddha Dhamma. That means the teachings of the Buddha mm. or the principles of the Buddha. Mm. Now you know the ism, the last, the something added ism. Now in the Western context, there is a uh, idea ism theory. Yes. The ism theory. Ism is something connected or binding or related to the God. Mm. But Buddhism is not the Buddhism. I mean, Buddhism is not the teachings that mm. binding with the gods or something like invisible spirituality. Buddhism is a man center. That's why Buddha's teaching. So that's why I, that's why personally, I prefer as I would like to address the Buddha's teachings at the Buddha Dhamma rather than Buddhism. Mm. Of course, in order to uh, you know the, in order to make things clear for the Western people as well as you know the English speaker people, we have to use the Buddhism. But if we use this term Buddhism having a good understanding, mm -hmm. the term Buddha Dhamma is a really I mean, a great meaning, good meaning and the proper meaning and proper things and a proper way to understand what the Buddhism. Okay. Right. Then next term is Buddhist culture. Culture. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, the term, oh, sorry, the term is Buddhist. Buddhist. Who is the Buddhist? Mm. Now, you say the people who follow the teachings of the Buddha. They are called themselves or they are called by others as a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, we know the Buddhist country. When we say the Buddhist country, like Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, mm -hmm. Vietnam, China, this and that. These are the Buddhist countries, we say. Because we say majority of people in these countries 
are the people who following the teachings of the Buddha. That's why they are called the Buddhist and Buddhist country. countries. Mm -hmm. So now you are clear about the Buddhist. And what is the Buddhist culture? The people who call themselves as a Buddhist and the things they are follow, some traditions or the, some cultural aspect they follow, mm. we say that is the their Buddhist culture and Buddhist traditions of course different schools. Mm. Different schools, different way of understanding Buddhism. But remember, whatever it is the culture, whatever it is the difference, tradition, finally the main aim of Buddha's teaching is to understand Nibban or mm. re understand the ultimate reality. That is to grasp or to understand or to perceive the things as they are instead of as they appear. Mm. Okay. Now here I would like to say a little bit about why we need to understand these things clearly, mm -hmm. term clearly. It is because even, even you know there is a big misunderstanding about like Buddhist culture, the people who follow the Buddha's teachings those, co those people are called the Buddhist mm. and their culture called the Buddhist culture and such culture as sometimes we see something here and there. Here mm. and there means what? For example, you know that they also steal the Putujjan, right? So they also do the so many wrongs. Mm. Now the person who are coming from the non-Buddhist country, non-Buddhist -re religions, they are saying then, okay, Buddha is, okay, you see these are the Buddhist people mm. and being Buddhist, this and that, and finally, without any hesitation, they are directly go to the teach, I mean, the criticize our master. Our master means what? Buddha, Lord Buddha. Buddha taught this and that, that's what this and do. Mm -hmm. Remember. Now here the good point is, culture have, or culture can we have many wrong ideas. That's right. But not the Buddha Dhamma. Mm -hmm. Buddha Dhamma is one thing. Buddhist culture is another thing. Because so many cultural aspects are actually here or uh, we follow that is we actually we given mm. we make we create it mm. for example the people in the buddhist country doing war or fishing this and that mm. so you can't say buddha allow war exactly. it's not like that mm. buddha totally prohibited exactly. or buddha totally said that war is wrong is wrong so then you should not ask the question whether army or this and this jobs are good or wrong, mm. good or bad. Mm -mm. That question is automatically solved there. Exactly. When you mentioned about the different definitions, I think yes. uh, not just that, there are so many other definitions also being produced these days just yes. for the, I don't know, for marketing, for what purpose? Actually those for the marketing. For marketing. Just identify, okay, this is the my tradition, this mm. is the my cultures. Mm. This is the my culture, these are my traditions, I am the better than you. Exactly. That is Okay, you may have such kind of perception, you, you have such kind of identity, you want to such kind of, you know, the names, because you are still in egoism. Mm -hmm. That means you want to so I and my, my country, I am. But that is, you want to be different from others. Mm -hmm. And you want to difference from others, not in the good way, when it is the bad ways. Bad ways. Human is humans. Mm. Okay, the Buddha's teachings actually applied for the all the peoples who want to or who 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 wish to eradicate these kind of views. Mm. That is called the I-ness mm. and my or mm. mine. So at the end of I mean, if you understand the Buddha's teaching clearly, it is very difficult. I mean, there of course there will no more mm. the concept like I, my, my country, I am this and that. Exactly. It's all just conceptions, conceptions. Constructs. and levels that we want to like superior from others, the difference from others, mm -hmm. want to highlight from others people. Other I think society. this is exactly what leads us to have stress in our lives because we also always think about protecting ourselves, protecting what is mine and also developing myself, things like that. So because of that, we face number of uh, emotions and maybe thought processes because we always keep on thinking and thinking and thinking on one thing with, with a goal. It's good to have a goal, but then when you overthink it and have a stress out of it, it's bad. But so in, when it comes to Buddhist teachings, um, Venerable Thero, how does it, um, how, how can it be applied to our daily life when it comes to addressing these issues like stress and uh, mental suffering and maybe sometimes physical suffering at the same time? How can we address that? Mm. 
Well, I think uh, in your question, there was a few very uh, key words that is you said that, okay, so we have to have target. Targets. Mm. Buddha had target mm. in order to attain Buddhahood. Yes. There is no desire. Mm. It's target. We should have an aim to get some things, but should not be desire. In the same terms, you said, we have to target aims, and because of we do not understand or we mix up the aims, desire, this and that, then the problem is coming, a stress is coming. Mm. Yes. A stress means what? Overthinking. Mm. Overthinking and you do not, I mean shaking mind, this and that. You cannot decide what I should do or sometimes what you have and you are trying to think, okay, how to protect this and that. Mm. Finally, actually, whatever we say, Buddha in the Roga Sutta said two things. Mm -hmm. There is said, all the Putujjana, Putujjana means the people who did not understood the Buddha's teaching or the reality. There are Putujjana and they have always two kinds of sickness. Mm -hmm. One is Kaika Roga, mm. Roga means sickness, mm. and Chetasika Roga. Kaika Roga means the sickness that we face in our body, mm. this physical body. Okay, and Chetasika Roga means mental disorders, disorders, mental sickness. So Buddha said in that sutta, there are people you can find who do the daily works properly, mm. they are very good or they are, they are very healthy in the physical. One year, two years, five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like that, there is a people who say, I'm, this is my hundred, I'm the hundred years old, but I'm still physically strong, strong mm -hmm. healthy. You can find such kind of people, but Buddha said, until you realize the Nibbana, that means the, the realize the path, that means the, you know, the God Magga Pala, you do not, you are not free from this mental sickness. Always worry. Mm -hmm. Now once, what is the mental, you know, mental, mental disorders? Mm -hmm. Oh, stress. Actually, this stress, that's used the terms, you said the stress. You know, these are actually given names. Mm -hmm. For example, if we look at the modern society or the Western <laughs> psychology mm -hmm. in DSM, mm -hmm. there have a numbers of uh, mental disorders. All these disorders we can see in Buddhism, but not like the, with a the single name. Okay, these are the NXID, these are the stress, these are depression, these mm -hmm. and that, these and that, not like that. Actually, all these disorders are mm -hmm. included in Cheta Sikaroke. Right. I remember there is one most vulnerable from the Thailand, namely uh, Bhikkhu Buddha Dasa. He pointed out three sickness. One is the uh, physical sickness, that means, the, as we said, the Kaika Roga mm. and Chetasika Roga. And he said the another one is the spiritual sickness. Spiritual sickness. Spiritual sickness, what? Actually, that is what the Tanha, mm. Raga, Dose, Moha, Tanha. These right. are the things. Because you, it's, you, it's, it's, it's your spirit that gets affected. By affected. It. Right. That is what you, that is what lead you to suffer in the cosmic suffering. Right. That is what, you know, the, give you the, uh, give you the birth to births and suffer, mm. you, know, you know, the birth to births and, you know, come to this co cosmic suffering. Mm. Because people like, they are, I mean, being human, sometimes we like being human. So that, being that's, humans. that's sort of a, uh, alluring situ situation because you like what you are and then you end up being the same in the future as well in the entire samsara. That is good questions. You know, once I attended one conference, mm. so there was so many uh, presented. So somehow at the middle, there was a kind of arguments. Mm. Why? The question was actually, I mean, the conference theme was the Jainism and Buddhism. Mm. And the question is due to the, you know, the male and females. So I mean, the priority. Mm. Then if I, I mean, when I was looking that discussion, there's, you know, conflicts and that argument, I just saw these people did not understand or did not read, mm. didn't read mm. the sutta called the Sangyoga Visangyoga Arya Pariyasana Sutta. Mm. If you read this sutta, in this sutta actually is talking about why a male become male, mm. why female become females. Right. So in that way, actually, we can say, yes, Kama Tanha, Bhava Tanha, Biva Tanha. That means I want to have it now, mm. I want to continue it yes. and continue it. That is what you lead the tanha to birth to birth and you know that is what we continue sangsar dukkha.
Mm. Right. So I think um, this adds value because sometimes we always think we do good deeds wanting to be something better in our next life. So even if you believe in reincarnation, when we, in Buddhism it, that is taught. But then again, we always do certain things to make sure that you get something better in the next try. So that is uh, what the um, Thero is actually um, speaking about when it comes to having this alluring situation where you like uh, your situation right now and to develop it later on. It doesn't have to be in the same lifetime, but it can also have a continuous uh, trend in your entire samsara. So moving on to the third question, um, so I'm going to answer now, when it comes to um, being busy, because today's um, theme, even though we got carried out, is about uh, having, uh, being a good Buddhist uh, in our daily life and also in the busiest life. So sometimes people might not have time to go through all these um, uh, sutras and all these percepts sometimes. Mm -hmm. So in that case, uh, what is your advice and how do you think we should at least simply, at the most basic level, we could be the Buddhist that is taught? Well, there is a very good question, very important questions, but very difficult to answer <laughs> because you are asking the what, the, how to say at the basic level. I mean, you know, the Buddha's teaching is such a teaching that when you try to make it basic, it's a difficult. Mm. Because a strength is reduced. Mm. So with the less strength, it's very difficult to apply. Yes. No, I mean, you can't say, okay, when I can practice Buddhist, Buddhist teaching, when I want to sleep. <laughs> you can't. You want to practice Buddha's teaching or you want mm. to, I mean, of course, the finally here we should understand this. Why Buddha's teachings? Buddha's teaching is in order to free from this cosmic suffering. Mm. Cosmic suffering means what? Today we feel something pleasure, right? Mm. Oh, this nice, this nice. I can enjoy this and that, but do you know how many times you had such, you know, do you know how many times we will have, you still don't know. No idea. So Buddha said, I mean, in order to under, now here, in order to understand these things clearly, I would suggest you to study at least little bit about Anamatagga Sanyukta, mm -hmm. it's coming from the Sanyukta Nika, in that references, in those references, they are talking about how the cosmic suffering, how far we had spent such a pleasurable things, enjoy those things, mm. but still we need, still we need. Now, yes, in the busy world, how we can apply these Buddha's teachings, since we do not have times, this and that. Of course, you say we do not have, do not have times. Mm. I know that time also do not have times, exactly. then how can we have times? <laughs> okay. Now, anyhow, try, let's try how to make a connection this year. Mm. Now, the main aim of the Buddha's teaching is in order to purify your mind. So, in order to practice Buddha's teaching, you do not have to go really you know, 24 hours to the temples, to the monks and this and that. Mm. For example, you have heard the Dhamma talks many times. Mm. You take one Dhamma talk yes. and you take one single words from there. Yeah. If you can keep in mind and live according to that, that is what? That means what? Always trying or always being aware about your three actions. Mm -hmm. My actions they perform from three doors. Mm -hmm. That is, what you say, that's called the verbal action. Mm -hmm. Once you say something, you have to have good understanding, clear pictures, what I am saying. Is it good for me? Is it good for others? Mm -hmm. And second thing is, what you thinking? When you think in some things, the you know the thinking process i mean thinking thoughts are uh, thought process thoughts are coming you know one by one by one so when you try to plan do something bad for others you know the, you will have very very nice plan mm -hmm. it's the nature there's nature our mind is used to go in the wrong ways very mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. it is very difficult to turn it in the right way mm -hmm. but if you are not aware about those thoughts you are in danger Okay, then what you say, you have to have the good understanding, uh, you have to be aware about what you're saying and what you're thinking and what, after that, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. That means your physical action, you have to have the very good understanding about your physical actions. So, in, in short, you have to be aware about these three kinds of doors, whatever you're saying, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're doing. If you have, if you think this mm -hmm. is good, for me, good for others, good for society, do it. Mm. If you feel it's not good for you, not good for others, not good for the society, mm. and it leads you to suffer in the cosmic suffering, yeah. I mean, you know, if it will increase your cosmic suffering more and more, then leave it. Mm. That is what the Buddha said actually to the Kalam. 
so for you to have good control of control of your thought of process processes. okay and you are the all the actions that you are you know performing through three doors right okay right so since we have we are also um, you know tight with our time we can also speak about how we how buddhism also teaches about uh, not running away from problems because sometimes we think uh, buddha uh, buddhism is also about also about just running away from problems because they speak about specifically about you know going somewhere and meditate but that sounds like for some of them that you're running away from the reality just to be isolated but that's not the issue is it yes Okay, here I think I really, I mean, I really should point out three things. One thing is Buddhism is not, Buddhism is not something like negative things. Hmm. Now, sometimes people think we have to run away this and that because they are thinking, they are talking about the Anicca, they are talking about the, you know, Marana. Hmm. Now, people are very afraid about, you know, the, when they are heard the term Anicca and the Marana. Yes. Actual Anicca teachings taught by Buddha not to give up all the things. Exactly. You must have what you should have. You must develop what you have, but in the good ways. Mm. In the good ways. Anicca teaching was taught by the Buddha not to cling, mm. not to attach. attach. You can have it. Mm. You can enjoy it. It's still no problems. But do not go in, go to you know the cling with it. Mm. The marana. Now some people thinking or the Buddhism talking about the marana, mm. the death. Yes. Is a you know the kind of negative things pessimistic. No. For example, once you go somewhere, I mm. mean, of course, shall we take the example, you go to the supermarket. When you go to the supermarket, you want to buy some things. Mm. What do you buy? For example, juice or some things you buy. What do you look first? Price or expired date? <laughs> Both. Of course, Honestly, the price. Price. Yes. But nowadays, maybe price. But, okay, we bring it to our house. Yes. Then you, we try to use these things before expired date. Yes. We know these specific things going to expire this and that day, exactly. but we don't know this body when going to expire. Mm. That's why we should not run away from the problems. Once the pro I mean, the nature of the problem is coming. Mm. They're testing us whether we can handle it or not. Once the problems come to the, our life, I mean, the, the problem is actually on the way. We are walking. When we meet the problem, we should try to overcome these problems in the right way if you try to overcome the problems the wrong way the problems become mm. double and triples and once the problem coming you do not kick it mm. and in the same place you do not shake the hands problems to come in our life not like that it will come if it is come we mm. try to manage it manage overcome it. it in the right ways but no need to be hurry right, yeah. no need to be hurry and th th that times so that's why buddhism saying that you do not have to run away from the problems mm. okay problems always coming in our life due to because our perception what we see we don't have limitations on that mm -hmm. we don't have to have limitation on that so if we do not have good understanding clear pictures or good perception about what we are seeing what we hearing mm. then there is a problems coming right so the entire understanding of today's discussion has been about how you can tackle using Buddhism and about how you can be safe even when it comes to problems uh, because when it comes to problems also if you uh, obey the Buddhist teachings you can uh, you might not be able to avoid it but you can mi minimize the damage that you, that you, that you, of, of your suffering of your body and your cosmic suffering and also uh, the mental suffering all these uh, can be minimized if you obey the proper teaching so today's discussion has been very insightful and we are extremely thankful uh, to the Thero uh, to the Venerable Bhikkhu who uh, visited us today uh, on upon our invitation Venerable Bhikkhu um, Prajipat of Bangladesh who is the visiting lecturer of the uh, Department of Pali and Buddhist Studies at the University of Kalania. So with that, today's episode of uh, Paths of Freedom comes to an end. We'll be coming back in the next four day as well. Until then, we want you to have a blessed four day.